And that passion we gives us passion for the lives that we must live and press on through the world that we're in. Because Jesus has done it all for you and me, glory to God. Can we give God the praise today on Palm Sunday? Everybody, everywhere, give him glory, give him honor, give him thanks, give him praise. Hallelujah for the great thing that he has done. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Oh, we give you glory. Oh, we give you glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hosanna in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Good God. Say, I tell you something. God has so many blessings in store for you today. Oh, my God. Let me tell you something. There's a monument of love about to fall into your ears today, saints. I want you to realize something that God is about to bless you. Oh, more exceedingly and abundantly than above all you can ask to think. Because his word is the diamond that shines in our hearts today. And we thank God for what he has done back then. It's still working right now and will be working forever. Mm -hmm. He rode in on a donkey. Good God Almighty. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. With palm trees up under the hoofs. Hallelujah. The people saying Hosanna in the highest saints. Let me tell you something. I'm excited today. I mean, I'm always excited for God because God has done so much for you and me that I can't help but praise him. And saints, as we're about to go into our Sunday school lesson today, uh, moments, you know, these moments that we have that God gives us to share this word with you is some of the most precious times in our lives. Amen. And our series is consistently still on part three of Is the Holy Spirit Still Present? Is the Holy Spirit still working? The gifts of the Amen, Spirit. Amen, amen, Hallelujah. In your lives today. Amen. And our teacher today is Pastor Hart for 30 minutes. And then Minister Chesley Bratton from Philadelphia. I mean, you got a tag team of Holy Ghost experience and Holy Ghost people coming your way. Amen. Glory to God. I want amen, you to amen. You got, you, you got, listen, you got some northern teaching Holy Spirit, some Southern teaching Holy Spirit, both coming together talking about the same thing, the Holy Ghost. Because he's the same yesterday, the day of day. Listen, the Holy Ghost is, listen, he's working everywhere. He hasn't changed. He's in the North, the South, the East, and the West. My God, and I praise in your heart. So saints, without any further ado, I'm going to pray and turn this thing over to Pastor Hart. And then he'll pass the baton to Minister Chesley. And then they both will be running down the highway of love for Jesus Christ. And they'll pass that baton to me. Amen. Amen. And today will be a great day. Listen, I want to tell you ahead of time, and you're here today, your sermon is, oh, what he's done for me. You'll find us in the second part in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 to 17. Oh, what he's done for me. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy 1, verse 12 to 17. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you, praise you, magnify you, glorify you, lift you up today. God, you are so wonder, you are wonder in our soul. We love you so much for all the great things you've done. You died for us. My God, how can we not open up our mouths and give you praise? Nobody died for us but you. And God, you know, my God, that's the ultimate sacrifice. So we must come to you this morning in humble thanksgiving for the triumphal entry that you did years ago. And how that entry, it allowed me, my family, everybody on this line to be a part of your family, God. You did it all for us. And that's the message today. And I thank you and praise you for these teachers today, these men of study, these men of discipline, these men of understanding, these men of fellowship with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit that have a word to say to the people of God from you. I pray you'll bring back all things to their remembrance. Yes, and let yes, the yes. power of the living God rest upon their hearts and in their minds and on their lips. And I pray that we'll receive everything that the Holy Spirit has to say to us today, on this day, this hour, this moment, this second in time, in Jesus' name. And everybody on the line said, Amen. 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 And amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor Hart, you got amen. it. Pastor Hart, you got it. 
Amen, amen, amen. I thank God for everybody that's on the line, and and uh, I hope and pray pray that this this uh, teaching today it will help everybody, including myself, including myself, right? Uh, I've been told told by some people that that uh, I sort of stay humble. It is a reason why I do. Let me let me express something a second. So let me pray first, Father God, in Jesus' name. We all thank you this morning for our health and our strength, and we are able to move move about in this body. For we're still in in this household household where God has not moved us from yet. As He said yesterday, I'm still in 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 this house because He's not finished with me in the earth yet. Father God, I thank you, I praise you for your power and your Spirit that's on this land, a life changing experience, a, a experience that I, I, when I meet up with you from time to time in the Spirit, I'm never the same again. Lord God, I thank you and I praise you for for this promised book that we have in front of us. From time to time, we thank you for you change our heart from one place to the other. Well, Father God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit, as He, as the, as the teaching says that He's still present. He, he He's still doing a work in the earth. Lord God, I praise and I thank you in Jesus' name. Everybody, say Amen. 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 I thank God for every voice this morning. We all are thankful that God has has left us in in, in this house that we are still in in at this hour. Uh, I have some things to point out at first. It, it sounds like when I'm teaching from time to time, I'm talking in real, but I'm really not. When I, I, I have something to, to open up to, because this is real simple, but, it, but, but it, it, it's outstanding if you hear what it has to say. Help me, Holy Spirit, to, to, to explain what you have put in my heart. Every time you hear me come on the the air to hear me say anything. Remember, I can't talk good except God used me. And and uh, let me help all of us. No matter how little you think your gift is, if it's given by God, it's, it's outstanding. We all are to help, help and pray to ask God to help us master what he, listen, listen to me very careful, help, help us master what he has gave. He deals according to his will. Every gift that's in the body, he has distributed and given it according to his will. His will, not our will. He knows what, what everyone is capable of. Everybody can't do the same thing, although you feel feel that you can. Uh, I mean, let me keep this simple. If you have given a, a somebody a song, your song is just as important as the man that has the message. Because re- remember, he has gave it. You, you, we did not pressure along the road nowhere. He gave it to us. He gave it to us for a time and a season. Amen. Remember to keep it simple. Stay prayerful with whatever the gift is. I don't care if it ain't never just taking up an offering, standing at the door. If he got you doing that, you are doing great in the kingdom of God. Amen. Because no gift is greater than the other. Amen. I speak in tongue from time to time, from time to time, but, but, but uh, oh, how I enjoy that. Because those gave to me for a reason and as a gift. Because of, 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 I feel too that that some of the gifts gifts that the old people have because because some sometimes by time to time people people in the church feel feel that, that they are not greater and they are less because they don't have this gift or that gift because remember them, them gifts are given and let me tell you something about those gifts those gifts no matter how small you think it is you are held accountable for that gift. No matter how small you thought it was, you are accountable. When, when, when something is, when are you accountable for something? It's something that's given to you. It's something that is that they constantly pray over, constantly watch over with your life. Because you you have an enemy. He, he don't want nothing according to your flesh. He he wants to the thief wants to, wants the gift that God had gave you. That's what he's after. Mm-hmm. 
He even after a lot of us when we when we are are, are asleep and not conscious, he he he, he that they still come come to try to steal the gift that God gave you. Anything personal according to yourself, because only the thief only only wants what wants what God has gave. Mm-hmm. What, what we precious in our flesh through ourselves, he don't care nothing about that. He he wants the gift that God gave you. Mm-hmm. Remember, he was in heaven at first. Mm-hmm. Let me move on. I, I heard something. Listen to this very careful. It was a storm coming. I mean, it, it was a great tornado. And, and the guy that told told to me, he said that that this, this was present and it was real. He said the tornado would, 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 was, I mean, it would turn down stuff, and they saw it a ways off coming. And people were, and grown folk were running, taking shelter. I mean, taking shelter, shelter from one to the other. Let's let, let this very careful. A small child came up in the midst of all these people running and hiding and, and getting in the cave and stood in front of all the people and spoke to the storm. The storm stopped still. Spoke to the storm and, and, and stopped still and, and, and done more than that. And when he spoke to it, stopped still and went another direction. Just a little child. All the grown folk, all, all the grown folk, folk was afraid. A whole lot, and uh, uh, we we had a teaching a few weeks ago. Did something happened a few days ago? Uh, my my daughter lost her wallet. My daughter lost, lost her wallet. It had all her credit cards, her driver's license, everything in it. But they were they were very fearful at the time, and uh, um, she she uh, uh, was going back to work, and and she got the Talking on on the phone, I think she was, and and you know she laid a water up on up on the back of the truck, and you know she got in the truck and drove off. And uh, I went to the store, the store, and uh, I looked up there in the road, and but about a couple of miles from the road, I, I didn't see it nowhere. Right, right, soon as she she came back home looking for it, nobody didn't find it. Why on the way back to the house? Very important thing on on the way back to the house. The house. I heard in my spirit, spirit to pray about it. I prayed about it, and um, and, and my, we done a group prayer. I, I, I prayed about it. My wife prayed about it, and my daughter prayed about it. Less less than an hour after the praying, in the, in the same hour, hour it, it's a boy passed past our house. A guy I used to work with. He stayed a few miles from us, and and and, and, and the water shows back up. Everything still in it. Amen. God answered that God answered that prayer just just in a group prayer just in that same hour. Amen. Amen. Everything was still in it. And and, and the guy that found it, he said he found it in the middle of the highway. Oh, what am I trying to say? I'm 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 trying to say God knows exactly who who to see and to find it. Amen. And and and, and the man that found it, he he don't even profess his being saved. And I heard the scripture says, though, though that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. We have to be led by God's Spirit. The Spirit is so great. He, he, he does such things, things among us. He, and he does it so supernatural. We be sitting in the same building and miss it. What am I saying? He comes into a house. Listen to this. He comes into a house. He uses whoever he wants to use and don't ask nobody. Amen. He don't ask nobody when he come or when he goes. Amen. If he don't have to ask nobody, he he is the head. Is that not right? Amen. Uh, but, 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 I'm, uh, but because the Bible said that when Jesus got up from the dead, he 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 came came he, he came among them with the doors and stuff still closed. Mm-hmm. And he breathed on them. The Bible says that everybody in that room through his breath were filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And when he left, when he left, all the doors and stuff were still closed. He he didn't open the door coming or going. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's 
Let's pray that God will help us bring something out of this teaching that we had, that we didn't have coming into it. Amen. Let's be, uh, let's learn. If we could only learn, I, I, I tell myself from time to time, and I allow the Holy Spirit to tell me this. Names and, and stuff is not great in God's presence. God sees us exactly who we are. The, all these big titles that we have in our time, time because it, it, if the title meant all, all it, it, it kind of made me above anybody else, I wouldn't have to live the same life that anybody else lived. It, it still takes, no matter how great the title is, it's still going to take the man, to, it's still going to take that person the same thing to get into heaven as do the next person that don't even have a great name. It's still going to take the same thing to, to get home. Um, I'm I'm trying to say something. No matter what God, as, as you always told me, no matter what I use you to do, it's always me and not you. Remember, the, the, and and I heard this morning, morning in, in in prayer time. Why did we think that Jesus told the disciples, "You don't go teach and preach nowhere till after He come. After He come, He's gonna lead you and guide you into all truth." How many of us teachers and preachers in our day think think that we knew knew as much as, as the disciples knew when Jesus was telling them that? They followed him everywhere he went. They followed Christ everywhere he went every day. He, they even asked him to, from different teachings that he taught. That because they had a privilege after leaving the crowd of people to ask him what did he really mean. Remember in Jesus' day, they uh, when Jesus taught, he had to open their understanding to what he was teaching because they still didn't know. How many of us, if we were real honest, we find ourselves in the same place from time to time. Mm-hmm. When, 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 when a great message is taught in our ears, uh-oh, I, I'm hearing something. If very few of us leave with what was taught, very, very, very few of us receive from the seeds that are being sown in our life. You, we, we remember from time to time, from the greatest to the small, when when people come out of the building, you could uh, personally ask one one to the other what was said. There were very few could tell you what what was said in in a word or two what what it really mean. Be honest, it, it's that's because uh, if, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, say amen. 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 Even, even me, because uh, uh, that's, that is one reason I, uh, uh, I still, still serve to, to say today. I've been, I, I've been saved for quite a number, I mean, over 30 years, but I still know very little. Uh, if, if I knew enough, enough to, to follow God and do everything that he tell me to do, not some of it, everything that he would tell me to do in a day, if I could do with it. Do it, I'd be a different person to what I am now. Well, I, I I I know that as long as I have been in the kingdom of God, I still grieve the Holy Spirit. What I'm saying, I grieve Him from time to time. I grieve Him more times times in, in a day that I could say. And and I'm and I'm gonna be very to- totally honest with you. I still don't do everything that He tells me to do. I have got so 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 simple with Him. I tell him good morning in the morning, and I tell him good night at night. That's very personal. He even told me too, and he said, "If you can't, you, you can't follow me in small things. You definitely can't follow me in great things." I I, I have got to, because uh, I heard a man of God say a while ago, he will bring all things to our remembrance. I will be a witness witness for him at this hour. Yes, he will do that. When I lose something, if I look for it for a while, I stop still. I I, I, I don't care how small it is. It can be a wrench on, on a job because I, I work by myself. I lose my wrenches from time to time, and, and I ask him, and, and he would tell me, tell me exactly where it's at. Amen. That's getting very, very personal. He wants to, uh, why do we have to be taught? Let me say this. We have to be taught how to love each other. We have to be taught, taught how to treat each other. A man, a man that, that has a wife, 
have to allow, ask the Lord to, to teach him the simple things, how to really love his wife. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I experienced that word, love. I'm going to say something. It, it took a different love for, to what we express, but for Christ to hang on the hang on the cross without saying a word, uh, for Him to even hang there among things, and could have came down at any time, but He still stayed. That that's a greater love than in, in, in because I heard the scripture says a a friend stick closer than a brother. And in the scripture, he is a friend of friends because he's the good shepherd that gave his life for us. Because he 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 said himself that that he could have came down if he wanted to. If he wanted to, he he could call out to his father. His father would send him legion of legions of angels if he wanted to, but he didn't want to. He was asked a whole lot of questions, and and and, and, the, and, and the Bible said a whole lot of questions. He kept silent. And it wouldn't even say a word. Why would Jesus Christ come here to humble himself all the way down to death and had to be filled with the Holy Spirit Spirit to, to start his ministry according to the word of God before he he even started started it started the most of the ministry that he came for, he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. The Bible did not say that he, he went on his own, he was led. John, uh, John the Baptist, well, when he got ready to baptize, Jesus was good. Uh, I, I mean, John, John tried to come up with all some all kind of excuses why he didn't want to baptize him. But Jesus told him it was written of him. After all the excuses that he came up with, uh, any excuses was, I'm going to be honest with you, totally as a person, every excuse John had was, was a really outstanding one. But, but he, he still couldn't out-talk Christ for him baptizing him. Because it was written. Anything that's written is still so. It's still still so today. The Holy Spirit is still is still leading and guiding. And the name said that He's still present. Can everybody still hear me? Amen. 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 Let's read read some. I got a few more minutes. I'm I'm gonna read read one of these. Um. Uh, uh, it's just a little bit of reading I had because my time is almost up. Those that have their Bibles, turn your Bible to uh, Acts, Acts chapter 8 with the 26th verse. We, we're going to read a verse or two, and then, then I'm going to pray. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 8 and verse 26. Remember, out of all our, our teachings, uh, for, for after, after this period of time, we barely has touched anything concerning the Holy Spirit because he's still at work. It's going to be until Christ comes back, the perfect one. Amen. Verse 26 says, we're going to look at Philip for, for a few minutes. Now an angel of the Lord... Let me read that back because I, I, I said a word that was not on the page. Now an angel of the Lord speak to Philip, saying, Arise and go down. Arise and go toward the south along the road, which goes, goes down from J- Jerusalem to Gaza. Gaza is desert. This is desert. Verse 27. Everybody in their spare time, go back and read this again. It's going to talk about about a Enos, a very important pers- person, could not un- understand the scripture. That's that's what I'm reading, and that tells us a lot about us. No matter what we think, we know we don't know what we think we know. Mm-hmm. Verse one seven. I'm going to read another um, word or two, and, and I'm going to pray. Because time's about up. Time is very important. Twenty seven. So he arose and went, and and behold, a a man of Ethiopia, a Enos of great authority. He had great authority. On the contents, the queen of the Ethiopians. And so in my reading, because this was a very knowledgeable man, because he kept kept the queen's the queen's treasury, and 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 he kept up with it. 
and he was a very important man, who was in charge of all her treasury and had come 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 to Jerusalem to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot. He was reading Isaiah the prophet, verse 29. Then a the spirit said unto Philip, go near and, and overtake this chariot. Remember, the spirit is telling Philip this. Verse 30. So Philip ran, ran to him and, and read. Uh, no, I still read something wrong. So Philip ran to him and, and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you read? What you are reading? I'm going to stop there. Let us pray. Father God, I pray that we all heard some of what the Holy Spirit had to say. Father, I, I feel that I have said what he, exactly what he told me to say. I have read exactly what he had told me to read. Father, I understand this. What I have to do, do, and what you appointed me to do, I cannot do except to be given. Father God, help us to, to use what you have given us. Father God, I, I pray and continue to, to bless this line. Continue to anoint every ear that's heard what the Spirit has to say to the church. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And uh, I'm going to say this to everybody that, that's on the line. Please listen to me very careful. Remember in the prayer, I asked the Lord to help us use what he had given. Except it's given you, you don't have it. Except it's given. Be sure you're getting that. No matter what he's giving you, no matter how little you think it is, a very small crop can, can feed a whole lot of people if it's attended right. If we don't never give us but, 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 but one gift, if, if we stand send paper to that gift and pray over that gift and make sure you wash, wash the gift while you pray it. Because that gift is always on the line here in the earth. Because the thief is always after your gift. I hope I help somebody in, in on this line besides myself. I, I, I thank God for this minute. Amen. Amen. And your nature hearing is the next teaching is, is in your hands. Amen. 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 Good morning, everybody. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Good morning. Magnify him international. Amen. Uh, and we're going to continue Amen. rolling this morning, uh, talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit Amen. and about Amen. the gifts that God has given us. Amen? Amen. And uh, we're going to pick up right where we left off uh, at last week. Uh, and, and I have about six or seven uh, more gifts to get to here. But, you know, Pastor Hart, he touched on a, a very important subject about, uh, you know, about how uh, nobody can work with their gifts apart from God. Nobody can use Amen. their gifts. Amen outside of the spirit of God leading and guiding us, you know, and amen, so amen. Uh -huh. a lot of these gifts will resemble certain talents that people have in this world. But I want to start off by making sure that we differentiate from a spiritual gift and a talent that somebody has. A spiritual right. gift comes directly for God, from God and it's supposed to be used for the upbuilding of his kingdom, for the upbuilding of his church, for the Amen. pushing forth of the gospel. Amen. What is the gospel? What is the good news? We're coming up on that time of the year where we have to review. What is the gospel? What is the good news? The good news is that for God so loved the world, John three sixteen, that he gave his only begotten son, and that whosoever shall believe in him, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. There's a dying world out there that do not know that they are perishing. Mm -hmm. They don't know that they are perishing because they have no a recollection of knowing that they're already spiritually dead and have no connection to the Father. Amen. 
If you ever want to yeah. see one of the greatest phenomenons, one of the greatest phenomenons in this world, you talk to somebody that either A, has not accepted Jesus Christ, or B, believes in another God. You talk mm-hmm. to them, and I promise you, you're going to see one stark difference between you and them. They right. have no relationship with the Father. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a disconnect. When they believe in any type of other God that exists, when, when I don't care if you're talking to a Muslim and they talk about Allah, Muslims are very quick to say, well, Allah and God are the same thing. But here's the difference. Here's the difference. Here's the difference. When they talk about Allah, they talk about a God that they don't have a relationship with. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Well, whatever whatever Allah says, well, we 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 hope that Allah uh, 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 will 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 forgive us. We hope that Allah will accept us. Uh, uh, we don't know what Allah is going to do. Listen, we take our cue from Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ and the Father were one. Jesus Christ mm-hmm. had communion with the Father on a daily basis. You can have mm-hmm. communion with the Father on a daily basis. Yes. People who worship and believe other gods do not have that ability. They speak about oh. God as if he's some far thing away or some far being away <laughs> that they cannot communicate with. That is the major difference between people who have accepted Jesus Christ and know him as their Savior, that is the evidence. That is the evidence of your salvation. Your relationship with the Father and your confidence in that because you know that he walks with you and he talks with you. Mm -hmm. Amen. That is how you know. He ain't walking and talking with nobody else. You know why? Because no person cometh to the Father except through the Son. Anybody else that tries to get in any other way is a thief and a robber. Mm-hmm. And we know what happens with thieves mm-hmm. and robbers. <laughs> Let somebody try to come up in one of your houses unannounced. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when we talk Amen. about the gifts of the Holy Spirit like we are this morning, but we're coming up on uh, 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 Easter Sunday and why we celebrate uh, 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 the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's Amen. important for us to remember that, yes, he ascended into heaven and he sit up on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, but he sent us spiritual gifts. Amen. And it's important that we use them and it's important that we understand them. Mm-hmm. Your ability to sing is not a spiritual gift. Amen. That's a talent that God giving you. Right. That's right. a talent that God has helped you develop. Amen. But your spiritual gift may be, like we talked about last week, the gift of helps, right? Amen. Somebody who has the gift of helps is able to support and assist other members of the body of Christ. So the sister that may be uh, having a youth ministry and she wants to, to, to have a youth concert night for the youth to come to, well, she knows you can sing. And because you have the gift of help, you sign up and don't ask for no donation. Right, right, right. You see, that's your spiritual gift, not your talent. We're talking about your spiritual gift. And so that's why we have to go over these things, because a lot of times people confuse uh, spiritual gifts. And I didn't even know I was going to be on this that long, but I heard, I heard Pastor Hart this morning, <laughs> and, I, and I really right. wanted to clear that up. Uh, you know, and I, I thank God for giving, for giving that to me, because, uh, you know, so many people uh, misunderstand their spiritual gift, and they misunderstand what the gifts are to be used for. Mm-hmm. Yes, hallelujah, yes. hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm so excited right now in my spirit, and I have to give God the glory, and I have to praise him just right now where I am, because as I mentioned oh, yeah. to you before, 
we have a relationship with him. Amen. 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 Our Amen. sin is not leading to death because Jesus Christ paid it all. Yes. And so we have Amen. eternal life. We have something that many others in the world do not have. And we are to use these spiritual gifts to put them to it. Salvation doesn't make you rich. Okay. Salvation doesn't make you wise. Mm -hmm. The word of God will make you wise. Mm -hmm. But you got to come to him in order to get wisdom. Hey, say so. God has saved the many of people that have not come to him looking for wisdom. So salvation will not make you wise. Salvation will not make you rich. I don't care how many pastors stand up there and they use uh, uh, spiritual concepts and they twist them around for their own personal gain to try to tell you how you're going to get rich, to tell you how you mm -hmm. are going to bend the will of God. Mm -hmm. mm. You can't bend the will of God. Amen. But you can learn Amen. to accept the will of God. All right. Good. If Jesus Christ had things his way when he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, he wouldn't have went to the cross. Amen. He didn't want to go. He said, Father, if it be no, possible, no. please let this cup pass. Say so. Yes. But he prayed, he prayed, he prayed, he prayed, because back to how I kicked this thing off, please don't miss this. This is why we use our spiritual gifts, because we need to put people on to salvation. Amen. That's what this is all about. All about. He prayed and he prayed and he prayed in the garden until Jesus Christ, I'm sorry, until God the Father did not change his will, did not change his situation. Amen. But as the scriptures will show, he changed Jesus. Mm-hmm. Because after the third time when Jesus got up, he said, I'm ready now. Bring it. Right, right, right. Bring it. it. It wasn't like that before he began to pray. So that is the main benefactor that you have in accepting Jesus Christ. Amen. You have a relationship with God the Father and the Son. And you receive the Holy Spirit who mm -hmm. entrusts you with these gifts. And he empowers you to push forth the gospel in the good news. Amen. 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 So let's look here at these last remaining gifts that I, that I have here to go over. Uh, the gift of leadership. The gift of leadership. Mm -hmm. This marks a person who is able to stand before a church to direct the body with care and attention and to motivate them toward achieving the church's goals. Mm -hmm. That's pretty simple enough. Pretty simple enough. But you have some churches where there are no leaders. <laughs> mm -hmm. Blows my mind. Blows my mind. Wow. You know, I, I'm glad I went through a lot of the things I, I went through in my church life in terms of experiencing a, a church that wasn't always perfect, experiencing some of the ups and downs that go on with the church and, and, and being able to learn from other teachers, you know, because mm -hmm. somebody told me a long time ago, somebody I had great respect for in, 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 in the Lord, they told me, they said, God won't leave his flock unattended. He won't. That's why the sheep don't choose the shepherd. You mean? God is the one that sends the shepherd. And the okay. shepherd is the leader. Yes. God has an order of things. He has an order of how he does things. 
And if you're in a church where you don't have a leader, you are headed for destruction as a church. Because the church will not prosper without leadership. Amen. And you certainly can't have a church that will prosper where where, where everybody uh, 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 is a leader and nobody wants to be a follower. Amen, amen. You know, it was a, a phrase they used to use back in the day, you know, and with me being uh, 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 a one-third part Cherokee, I can say this. You can't have everybody being a chief and nobody want to be an Indian. Amen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I also heard the great Charles Barkley say one day, he said, you can't be a leader unless you learn to follow. Amen. Charles talked about how he never won a ring, but he was able to be a leader when he matured in his career because he learned from guys like Moses Malone, who taught him the way. Mm-hmm. You can't be a leader unless you are following somebody. Amen. And let me say this. If you have the gift of leadership and you are leading a church, you are following Christ's orders. Amen. Amen. That's number one. Why you can't tell, why, why, why the members can't tell the leader what to do. The members have to get in line with the leader. You can disagree. It's fine to disagree. We don't always have to agree on stuff. Mm-hmm. But if you are operating under the spirit and direction of God, you get in line quick. Because you realize when the leader has spoken, well, now I got to follow. It's now time to lay mm-hmm. that down. Mm-hmm. Amen? Amen. 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 Joseph Peace. I'm still here. Next gift. Gift of mercy. Amen. Mm-hmm. This is defined, this is a defining trait of a person with great sensitivity for those who are suffering. It manifests itself in offering compassion and encouragement and in a love for giving practical help to someone in need. Mm-hmm. Now let me just say this here. Let me let, let me just say this about the gift of mercy. This definition of the gift of mercy is missing one thing. This definition of the gift of mercy is describing somebody with empathy. But just like the Bible says, if you see your brother or sister and they're uh, uh, in need, and you can help them, and you say, "No, nah, I'm gonna pray for you." and just let them go about their way. If you are able to enact mercy on somebody Mm -hmm. and you don't want to give that person mercy, then you don't Mm -hmm. have that, you're not using that gift of mercy. And I'm not saying you don't have the gift of mercy because here's the thing. A lot of people can have a spiritual gift and not want to use it. Mm-hmm. Amen. Shut, shut That's one of the great jobs of the enemy is to get you to not want to use your gift. That's right. Amen. Once you all find out the gifts that you have, that's why we go over this teaching. I'm sure we'll go over it again someday. Once you, the enemy finds out the gift that you have, he's going to put you in situations and and try to uh, 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 convince you mm-hmm. not to use the gift. That's right. Amen. Amen. Because, saints, when time is up, time is up. Mm -hmm. When judgment day arrives, that's it. Amen. And we know we're going to be judged on how we use these spiritual gifts. Amen. Amen. There is no running it back. There is no do over. Mm -hmm. That's it. Amen. And so, if you have the gift of mercy, because a lot of times people who have the gift of mercy find themselves in positions where they are over other people. Uh-huh, you may yeah, be a manager on a job. You mm-hmm. may have some money and people owe you money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
A lot of times people who have to give the – because think about it. If you can't enact mercy on somebody else, mm-hmm. what good are you having to give? <laughs> Amen. 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 So examine those areas of your life. If, you, if you're somebody where you frequently find yourself overbearing other people, and think about whether or not you're using your gift of mercy. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Because everybody deserves a little mercy. That's right. Amen. Sometimes that's all a person needs. You, you know, somebody may owe you some money, and all they really mm-hmm. need you to do is get up off of their back so that they can get the mm-hmm. money up that they owe you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mercy. Mercy. That's a lesson we all need to learn in this country today. Mercy. Amen. Mercy. Amen. 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 There's a big push right now in our political system to show mercy to uh, prison offenders. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. And and I'm 100% on board with it because I actually I knew somebody personally who used to work for me. And they were trying to get their life together, but one little thing that happened, and they go back to jail because they stuck mm-hmm. on probation for ten years, five, ten years. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. If you're free, you're free. And at yeah. the second call of any one of these probation officers for anything, for anything, they could be sent back to jail. Amen. And so mercy. When you have positions like that, mercy is very important. No, you're not supposed to be soft and you're supposed to be a pushover, but to whom much is given, much is required. You have to really do your job and judge. That's right. Amen. Here's the next one. This is a big one in the church. It's a big, big, big gift in the church. Some people think they have it. Some people do have it. A lot of people think they have it. And they really don't have it. <laughs> All right. A lot of people think they understand it, but they don't mm-hmm. even really understand it. Because Amen. if they really understood it, they would know that it's God's, desi- it's God's desire for a lot of us to have this gift. And that's the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy. Mm-hmm. 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 It Amen. ain't about what you think it is. All the right. gift of prophecy is not standing up, putting two fingers to your temple, closing your eyes, and telling another person how rich they about to get. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. The gift of prophecy is the ability to speak the message of God to others. Amen. Uh, let me ask you this for a second. So many times I've seen people with the gift of prophecy. Speak of how somebody is about to profit. Speak of how somebody mm-hmm. is about to get they come up. Speak about mm-hmm. how somebody is about to get their financial breakthrough. Something good is mm-hmm. about to happen. Mm-hmm. But did Nathan not have the gift of prophecy when he went to David and told David he was wrong? That's yeah, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For the sins that he had committed? And about how he had to mm-hmm. repent? That's right. Amen. See, a person who has the gift of prophecy is not going to always come to you with good things. We know That's Jeremiah right. That's right. was a prophet. Why? He preached mm-hmm. over 30 years, and nobody mm-hmm. listened. Amen. He didn't speak for 30 years about how people can expect to get rich. Mm-hmm. He preached for 30 years about how you need to get your life right with God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The gift of prophecy is simply the ability to speak the message of God to others. Amen. And you can't have the gift of prophecy if you're not in communion with God. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. Because how do you know when God is talking to you? Mm -hmm. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. That's right. If you can't hearken to the voice of God, you certainly can't help nobody else. Amen. And I'm going to tell you another big one with the gift of prophecy. This, this is a very, very big one here. 
If you have the gift of prophecy, God has given you the gift of prophecy, you better use it. You better use it. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's a I don't think there's a greater warning that I can give you. Then you yeah. better use that gift of prophecy. If God tell mm-hmm. you to say something, say it. Mm-hmm. Say it. You leave all the consequences to him, as Charles Stanley would say. But if God has given you the gift of prophecy to deal with somebody else, then you better do what God is telling you to do, and you better push forth that message. Amen. Amen. Moving on. The gift of serving. The gift of serving. That's a talent for identifying tasks needed for the body of Christ and using available resources to get the job done. Now, I want you to note something here, that a person that has the gift of serving doesn't necessarily mean that they have the gift of helps. Those are Mm -hmm. two, they're two different gifts. They're two different gifts. A person who has the gift of helps could be the person who walks into the finance office of the church and says, uh, you know, I heard y'all need somebody to, to help count the money on Sunday. I'm here to help you count it up. They can say, hey, I heard you need somebody uh, uh, to help, uh, you know, cook the eggs for the for the men's mm-hmm. breakfast. I'm here to help. Mm-hmm. I heard you need somebody to uh, uh, help repair the pews in the church. I don't really mm-hmm. know how to do that, but I'm here to help. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's an example of somebody who has the gift of helps. You see the choir got three members and they need to sing a song and they're looking for a fourth member. You say, I, I'm not sure if I'm the best singer, but I think I can help y'all harmonize a little. I'll be your fourth member. Oh, yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the gift of helps. But the gift of serving is a little bit different. Because you can have the gift of helps and not directly touch people that you're serving. You're just helping in a certain ministry. You're just helping out a a, a certain ministry, but you're not directly touching somebody. Mm -hmm. A person with the gift of serving is actively working to serve others. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Then you can have you can have both gifts, the gifts of help and the gifts of serving. It, 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 you can absolutely have both of them. But I wanted to distinguish the difference between the two because they sound similar, and they do, you know, look similar on the surface. But they are two different gifts, and I wanted mm-hmm. to kind of explain that to you uh, in terms of of what they both are so that you know what the difference is. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 The last thing I'll talk about, the difference between the gifts of serving and the gifts of helps. The gifts of helps, uh, a person with the gift of helps, more than likely is only working in a temporary fashion. They're only there to help in an area where there's a need. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. But a person who has a gift of serving is a part of the ministry and is serving the people. Mm-hmm. Hopefully that's a lot clearer for everybody. The other gift is one of the most popular gifts here. And it's called the gift of the speaking in tongues. Mm-hmm. And there's been a lot of teaching on this. We're going to go over this several other times. So I won't spend too much time with it, but I want to tell you it's the ability to speak in another language but it's not a language that has been learned if you're from spain and you come over to america and you start praising god and preaching in spanish why everybody else speaks english that's not the gift of speaking in tongues that's just you speaking in your native language The gift of tongues is an unknown language to man. That's why the Bible also talks about an interpreter who can help interpret if it's done in a public setting. 
Amen. Because you can't have somebody speaking in tongues on a Sunday morning with a church full of people for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And nobody knows what's being said. Amen. Amen. The, the last two gifts I got here, and I can wrap these up uh, in the time that, that we have. Amen. The gift of teaching. The gift of teaching. It's the skill to teach from the Bible and communicate it effectively for understanding. And here's the key part. Spiritual growth of others. Yeah. Amen. You have a lot of people that can read the Bible front to back and they can break it down, but they can't effectively help someone spiritually grow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why we do this. That's why we do it. That's why we come together on Sunday morning, Tuesday evening. Hello? Because we need to spiritually grow. And every morning throughout the week, amen, I don't want to uh, uh, miss that because there's a lot of people blessed. Amen. That tune in Monday through Friday uh, 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 for moments with the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So Amen. all the times that you tune in to get these teachings and preachings, it's so that it can help you spiritually grow. Mm -hmm. And so the person Amen. that has the gift of teaching not only can navigate through the Bible and explain different biblical topics and, and help you understand where you are. They're not just a walking and talking concord. Mm -hmm. But they can Amen. also break it down with understanding to help you spiritually grow. Amen. That Amen. is what the gift of teaching is. Mm -hmm. And the last one here, that's the gift of wisdom. The gift of wisdom. Oh, wow. And I think everybody in the church need to have one of these, one of need to have one of these people, and they need to be uh, a part of leadership. Amen, because amen. One of the major problems we have today is we got churches that want to entertain, mm -hmm. churches that want to get your money, churches mm -hmm. that want to profit financially mm -hmm. and prosper financially, but they're not giving the people any wisdom. Amen. 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 It is a sad day as we learn it on Tuesday nights with the Mark of the Beast teaching. It is a sad day to know that the Antichrist is going to walk into the synagogues and put his feet up like he owned the joint. Mm -hmm. oh, that's right. And so many mm -hmm. people right. are going to follow behind him willingly. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. That's right. Why? Because we know from the word of God that the Antichrist will not come until there's a full turning away. Mm -hmm. People are going to turn away from the teaching of God. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. Amen. To follow a substitute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're going to give up that pure cane domino sugar for some mm -hmm. sweet and low. Mm -hmm. Lord <laughs> That's pretty plain. You're gonna trade in that ice cold Pepsi for some RC cola? Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Amen. Every church, I pray that every church has somebody with the gift of wisdom. And and, and I also pray that the, I'm going to say this before I wrap up. I know it's 1130. I also pray that the person that is the leader, the person that has the gift of leadership, also, also has the humility mm -hmm. and they have the understanding to give someone with the gift of wisdom the ability to operate in their gift. Amen. Wait, wait, wait. Amen. Because just because you have the gift of leadership does not mm -hmm. mean you know the most out of everybody in the church. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. If we in it to win it, we all have to work together. And as I mentioned when I kicked this off that I believe every single church that God has established, that's the mm -hmm. key word that God has established. Yeah. Amen. God has established. 
Amen. Every single church has a collection of these gifts. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the pastor don't have all 22. No, he doesn't. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. Everybody has to work together. Amen. Everybody. Amen. Amen. And no one Amen. gift is more important than Amen. the other. Amen. So this has been our second Amen. teaching here on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And and I pray that everyone has been blessed. And I pray that you have a better understanding of spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. And I also can promise you that this won't be the last because this is the most important teaching outside of understanding your salvation and being able to, to, to uh, break that down uh, for somebody else. This is the most important teaching that you can have right now because you need to be able to use your spiritual gifts for the work of the Lord. Amen. 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 I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to close this out in prayer right now. Uh, uh, and I thank uh, Pastor E and I thank Pastor Hart. Amen. For, uh, you know, this teaching and, 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 and um, you know, I thank God for the time that we've been able to share this morning. Amen. In these last few weeks. Amen. Most gracious and heavenly Amen. Father, we come before you again. We thank you for just everything, just everything. We can't even put it into words, but we thank you for all these okay. spiritual gifts, Lord, that you have given us. Uh, we pray now, Father God, a, a prayer of repentance for Amen. anyone that may have had these gifts and not wanted to use them. Amen. We pray a prayer of repentance Amen. today for uh not actively seeking and understanding the importance of our spiritual gifts. Well, and we also pray, Father God, that uh, you will push forth the gifts in people, Father God, that uh, uh, they'll be busting out the seams with their gifts, Father God, and it will be revealed to them the work that you have for them to do with their gifts, Father God, because Danny, uh, like an arrow, Father God, we need to be pointed in the direction in which uh, you want us to go, Father God. So uh, allow us to move forward from the stuff that, the teachings that we, 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 we've had for several years, Father God, and, and push us into a new direction, the direction in which uh, you will have us to go, Father God, of more spiritual growth and maturity. Amen. We pray for our pastor this morning as uh, oh, concludes and, and, and gives us uh, uh, what you have to say this morning, Father God. We just pray that you will cover him, Father God, and uh, 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 that you will allow him to remember those things in which he has studied, Father God, and, and that you'll even add to it, Father God. Amen. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray and we thank you for all these teachings. Amen. 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 Thank your sermon and your hearing today is called Oh, What He Has Done 